so the other day I saw a video by a Kimberly Daniels she's a state representative over in Florida and when I saw this video which I'm gonna play for y'all in a second I figured that let's we need to have a conversation y'all because because Christians have been saying shit like they thank God for slavery for too long we've allowed it to happen now for way too long at some point you have to look at some motherfuckers and say get the fuck out of here that's what you have to do they've said it too many times over various you know time frames that they thank god for christianity they think uh uh, uh you know uh, uh, Christianity was a divine thing that happened to them. No matter in what means they got the Christianity, it was a blessing, no matter how it got to them. I'm going to play a clip from coon ass Kimberly Daniels as was she standing up in front of a church giving her speech and how she feels that slavery is responsible for her emancipation. I thank God for slavery. Mm. I thank God for the crack house. If it wasn't for the, the crack, crack house. house, come on somebody, God wouldn't have never been able to use me how he can use me now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for slavery, uh -huh. clapping, I might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. They clapping, y'all. They saying, yeah, that's a problem. That's a mass delusion. So I said, you know what? I could sit here and be mad, or I could do the knowledge. I could walk us through this fucking Bible and do some knowledge with y'all. We're going to read what the Bible has to say about slavery. We're going to go over Exodus uh, 21, 1 through 26. We're going to walk this shit through together. Maybe you hadn't sat down and spent no time with Exodus. Maybe that's what the fuck I'm supposed to do sometime is do we look into this Bible, the words of God, as to what the divine ideas of slavery were or, or is, actually. And you have Christians out here thanking God that slavery or that Christianity was beaten into them, brutalized into them um, through various methods by the European. That's just how it is. That's how you got it. That's why she thanked God for it. As it was beaten to her people. The Bible, as it was being beaten into us, they made sure they went over the rules for slaves. Now, you can step back from this thing, really, and look at it for a second and say, well, why would slavery even be dealt with at all as opposed to say, well, nah, very short, um, you know, nothing really long or major going on. You just don't do that to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you just don't run around acting like that. You don't make anybody your slave. And then you'll have people who will justify slavery and say things like, well, the way the European did this, it was cool. It was cool. It was a part of the game. It was a part of society. It was normal. Just because something is normal doesn't make it okay. I don't I don't see how you have this great, you know, awakening to the love of the human being and nature and life and all these things that the Bible is supposed to be teaching you, how do you have this great appreciation and you write slavery into the Bible? 
black folk. Come on, man. Really? So I figured we should at least go over it because maybe the pastor ain't dealing with it on Sunday. I have no fucking idea what's going on up at the church on Sundays. I know when I went to church, it wasn't really dealt with. It's kind of one of those things in black churches that they kind of really don't really read over with with you and yell at you very loudly. They don't really get into this part. So we'll do it. We're going to go through it together and learn together. All right. This video may be a little lengthy. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, we're going to go through this thing, break this whole shit down, and look at what God had to say about slaves. All right. Starts off, it says, now, these are the rules that you shall set before them. Them being people, them being the, you know, the masses. When you buy a Hebrew slave... The argument is that the black people are the original Hebrews. So we'll work that. We'll say, okay. Shouldn't really matter here who Hebrews are. This shouldn't even be a thing. This is, my problem starts very early with this. So y'all can see how we're going to go through this. I'm going to have several problems with what I'm reading, I'm sure, because it starts off wrong. And if you start off wrong, you can't really build on bullshit because you, you, you don't buy slaves. You don't treat people like that. You don't treat people as the bottom of the barrel. But fine, we'll move on from that. He shall serve six years, and in the seventh, he shall go free for nothing. So freedom in six years. And on the seventh, he can get the fuck up out of there. But he don't get no compensation. Just, I holla, basically. See you later, man. Verse three says, if he comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. So, you know, if he married, his wife is, is she a slave with him already? But if he comes in married, they can walk up out of here together. Hmm. Verse four, if his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out alone. So even in the seventh year, if he is to, if the master breaks him in with somebody, force them to mate, basically, at that point, the wife that the master set him up with to mate, really, it's really a mating partner, he can still leave, but the woman is still here as a slave, and so is his daughters, or his son, so we have them. Hmm. But he can still go, right? Why is that even there? Early questions you can be asking yourself as we go through here. Verse 5. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to God and he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost. What the fuck do you mean? If he confesses that he loves the master who is even treating him this way, the wife that the master set him up with and the children that he had with the wife and say he don't want to go nowhere, he want to stay. The master then has the power, the divine power to take him to God. Nobody who is engaging in slavery is going, walking up on God, just bringing him people to fucking talk to. But this is in the Bible, 
So it's real to people. Bring them up to the door. What? Okay. We'll continue. And his master shall bore through his ear or bore his ear through with an awl. And he shall uh, be his slave forever. I mean, we only six verses into this fucking bullshit. Listen to the. So when this master brings the uh, uh, slave to God like he can, first of all, but fine, brings him to the door. They got God in a fucking room somewhere they can just walk to. Well, put the slave by that door. You don't have to really show him God or anything like that. Just you're bringing him to God. God is in there. He, you ain't got to see him. At that point, the master want to bore through his ear with an awl. I said, well, uh, if like many of y'all, I don't know. I was like, well, what the fuck is an awl? Hmm. Let's look at what the fuck an awl is. Also known as a shank. So what the fuck an awl is. So get one of these and bore through his ear. This is what the master shall do to the slave after the slave confesses to him that he loves him, the family, and I want to stay and I don't want to go nowhere. I'm here for the team. So master takes him to the door of God and bore through his ear with a shank. Through his brain. Do y'all understand how fucking disgusting that is? Do you understand if you believe in the Bible, you can see this and say something like, well, that was the Old Testament. Why the fuck would God be saying this type of shit? You ask yourself that? What type of God says this type of shit? We'll continue. Verse 7. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, it starts off like that. This is something a man can do. She shall not go out as the male slaves do. So for the woman, there's a different uh, methodology to how you treat a woman. God differentiates. Men get one treatment, women get another treatment per society, per God, per ordained, right? I'll continue. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she shall not go out as the male slaves do. If she does not please her master who has designated her for himself, then he shall uh, then he shall let her be redeemed. Like he has to, he is so powerful. The master is so powerful that he is somebody that anybody would have to redeem themselves to anyway. He's a goddamn slave owner. Who You don't have any redeemable qualities for anybody to have to redeem themselves to you. But if she don't please her master, The female slave is his for himself. Then he shall not let her be redeemed. He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people since he has broken faith with her. So he can't just put her on the block. Put her out there in the streets. But he broke faith with her because it matters how the fuck somebody, a slave master would treat somebody. That matters. And the slave is out to please the master so good that it is divine. If he, de if he designates her for his son, he shall deal with her as a daughter. So if a slave master gives a slave to their male son, 
then the slave master is supposed to treat the slave as his biological child. Your daughter, you gave to your son as a slave. Huh. I'll continue. If he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, or her marital rights. So, she can't leave, but the least he can do is feed her, clothe her, and don't take her marital rights from her. If, it, if he does not do these three things for her, she shall go out for nothing without payment of money. So basically, if the master does not give her food, clothing, or marital rights, he is breaking a contract deemed by God. If he breaks this contract, then she gets to leave scot-free, as they say. Why the fuck would God be saying this type of shit? What type of rules are these that you have for a Hebrew slave? A certain people that you made to be slaves. What type of God are you? These questions don't get asked. This is the devil speaking right now. We'll continue. Verse 12. Whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. So you can beat them. You can strike them. But you can't kill them because if you kill them, you shall be put to death. By who? We don't know, right? <laughs> God surely didn't do it. Because there were uh, slaves being killed on planta plantations. This is in recent history, beat to death. Didn't nobody put the slave master to death. But they say he shall be put to death. Like, what laws are these that you're speaking from and who is enforcing these laws? Because if you have the same people that are supposed to enforce the laws, also, uh, uh, um, you know, carry out the rules to keep you in line with the laws, then it's, cre it's already in the creation of a rigged system. What type of God is this? To create a rigged set of rules, God is going to come deal with them. No, he ain't. No, he's not. That's not what God's out here doing. Soon as somebody do something, they get put to death. Again, it says, whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. But it does not say by who. I'll continue. But if he did not lie and wait for him, but God let, uh, but God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint you, I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. Who? Who? Ain't nobody doing this. There is no suit. So, okay, you, you, if these are laws per God, then something should be done when these infractions are happening. What you're saying should be happening, but it's not happening. But if God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint for you a place in which to flee. This doesn't make any sense. This is in the Bible. I'll continue. But if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning and basically by cunning by lying by tricking by conniving you know if you trick somebody but if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning you shall take him from my altar 
that he may, uh, that he may die. But who's carrying this shit out? God's not coming to do it. Slave masters aren't going to fucking do it to themselves. They're not that fucking convicted. They own slaves. Whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. Whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. Like, a lot of death in here. Put to death. Not, I'm God. I don't have to put you to death. I can just erase you. I'm God. There doesn't have to be a scene. There doesn't have to be a, a, a town. Is You know, you see, I, I see pictures of people getting walked through a town while everybody yelling and spitting and, you know, public lynchings and all of this shit. But this is what the fuck happens when you God. This is the type of shit that gets you off, I suppose. Sick motherfucker if you ask me. Be honest with you. Some sick shit going on. Put to death. If you sell, steals a man, steal a man and sell him, you should be put to death. If you found in possession of him, you put to death. Who doing the killing? <laughs> like, the enslavers? Are they enforcing these rules? God, is he enforcing these rules? Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. Okay. When men quarrel and one strikes the other one with a stone or with his fifth fist and the man does not die, but takes to his bed. <laughs> I'm not trying to like. I'm, I want. I want this to be. This is some serious shit that's going on here. I don't want to, but just reading this shit. It's just like, what the fuck do you mean? When men quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist, and the man does not die, but takes to his bed. Then if the man rises again and walks outdoors with his staff, <laughs> he who struck him shall be clear. What you mean? <laughs> Only he shall pay for his loss, for the loss of his time, and shall have him thoroughly healed. What do you mean? You getting down to specifics of the rules, what happens in people fighting? God? You got rules for that? Somebody get into a fist fight, they don't beat him to death. He goes, lays down, get him a little rest, right? Gets up, walks it off, got him a cane already. They apparently, this motherfucker already, he said, walks outdoors with his staff. What's the rules for if he ain't got no staff? Like, <laughs> what if he just wake up and walk? But fine, with a cane. Of some sort holding him up. He who struck him shall be clear. It's okay if he, as long as he wake up, like, whoo, man. Whoo, he got up, man. So it's gonna be okay. So I owe him for loss of time because, you know, he was fucked up in the game for a while. I'll, you know, they can heal him up and stuff, man. It's, I'm wild, I know. But he didn't die, so it's okay. I'll continue. We only got a couple more left, y'all. Verse 20. When a man strikes his slave, male or female, with a rod, and the slave dies under his hand, he shall be avenged. By who? There's some people who went through, at least to my knowledge, 400 years of this. And this didn't happen. So if this is true, 
Even though y'all may chalk it up as what y'all call the Old Testament. If this is true, how did, again, when a man strikes his slave, male or female, with a rod and the slave dies under his hand, he shall be avenged? By who? But if the slave survives a day or two, <laughs> like, what? what? Come on. If the slave survives a day or two, that's it. One or the other. You know, like, if one of these two things happen, <laughs> I don't know why I just didn't say survive a day. Like, what's the two about? Because one seems to be kind of the line. Like, why you got to say a day or two? But fine. But if the slave survives a day or two, he is not to be avenged for the slave is his money. <sighs> we are reading this shit together, y'all. I ain't making it up. It's not a matter of this can be interpreted some other type of way. It says it right here. If the slave survives a day or two, he is not to be avenged. So no, no harm to come to the person who beat him uh, which will be the slave master uh, for the slave is his money. So you beat him like that. He doesn't die. Him surviving makes him that slave, the slave master's money. Hmm. Verse 22. When men strive together and hit a pregnant woman so that her children come out, but there is no harm. Y'all, listen. When men strive together and hit a pregnant woman, so it has to be more than one man hitting a pregnant woman so that her children come out. You, you beat the baby out of a woman. But long as nothing's wrong with the baby. It says here, but there is no harm. The one who hit her shall surely be fined. Not put to death. Like the rules for any slave getting out of line. They shall get fined. As the woman's husband shall impose on him. And he shall pay as the judge uh, as the judges determine. So. <laughs> if I beat your wife. To a baby comes out of her. And the baby doesn't die. I owe you some money. My bad. Here's a couple dollars. And the judge is going to set the cost. Because now the judge has the power of God too. Don't know. The judge gets to create the cost of the fine. Verse 23. But if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, strike for strike. Whatever harm is to come to that child, that's what whoever caused that harm and that pain, that's what's going to happen to them. Life or life. Who is it being enforced by? Is God out there doing this shit? Because I didn't hear about it. Just going to be honest with y'all. Again, if I'm tripping and maybe y'all heard about this. And I just didn't hear about it. Then fine. Put me up on game. But if God said this. And God is enforcing these rules. Who was acting out the life for a life? White folk didn't run up on uh, other white people. Uh, uh, treating their slaves any type of old way. And they killed them for it. That wasn't what was happening. It was normal. There was no consequence for doing this shit. 
Who's there to enforce these rules? Last verse right here to Marie, 26. When a man strikes the eye of his slave, <laughs> oh man, there's a rule for if you hit your slave in the eye. Okay. When a man strikes the eye of his slave, male or female, and destroys it, he shall let the slave go free because of his eye. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is this shit? What is this? If a slave master hits his slave in the eye so hard, say with a brick or some shit, destroys his eye, then the slave gets to go home. Because of his eye. When did this happen? Slave masters would do this to slaves all the time. Knocking eyes out. Brutalizing slaves. He, sh he shall let the slave go free. Who gonna enforce it? God? When was it enforced? If he knocks out the tooth of his slave. Y'all listen. <laughs> like listen to how crazy this shit is. If he knocks out the tooth of his slave, male or female, he shall let the slave go free because of the tooth. So I or tooth. Then they get to go free. But you can cut off feet. You know, willy nil. We don't really get into all of that. They wouldn't have had to write all of this if they just would have been, well, you just don't do people like that. There's no such thing as slavery. I am God, therefore I say this. If I'm going to be saying something, if I'm going to try to make a goddamn impact on the world, if I'm going to be God and I get to choose what I say, well, I'm just saying no slavery. If I'm God, I'm not breaking it down as to how to justify it or anything like that. And this shit isn't being enforced. You get black folk out here who would justify this shit, justify this book, justify the treatment of their people and how they got it. Slavery was a normal thing. Christian views on slavery are varied both religious, uh, regionally and historically. Slavery in various forms has been a part of the social environment for much of Christianity's history, spanning well over the 18th centuries into the early years of Christianity. Slavery was a normal feature of the economy and society in the Roman Empire. And this persisted into different forms and with regional differences well into the Middle Ages. Understand this. And to this Middle Ages, these Dark Ages, well, it was still happening even then. Christians were still running around justifying slavery, talking about God wrote this fucking book. When it sounds like a man trying to get over on other men, trying to treat other men like shit wrote it. That's what it sounds like to me. Why the fuck you got a certain way you treat slaves? How the fuck is there even slaves? How is that possible? This is normal into the dark ages. St. Augustine, a saint, a saint, described slavery as being God's intention and resulting from sin. It's black folk that believe that right now. It's black folk that believe that slavery and what black people are going through is what God wanted based on us sinning. This is what St. Augustine said. There is an entire religion where black people believe this very thing. 
Y'all sinning too much. Y'all need to come to God. That's what's wrong. St. Augustine. You think he was black? Y'all think that? He don't look black to me. Not from this picture of him. Hmm. St. Augustine. They said it'll blow it up a little bit. This is St. Augustine. This is how they honor their saints. Put little kids in the pictures with them. This was cool. They're like a little midget. A little midget kid. Little grown ass arms and shit. This is cool. He's looking off. He ain't even looking down at this motherfucker. He's looking off into the distance. He over here. Thinking about how much uh, slavery is uh, justified by sin. That's what he's thinking about. He giving thought to that. That heavy shit. That was on his mind right there. All up in his face and shit. This is what's going on with him. This is what's going on with St. Augustine. Right? Hold on, I'm trying to get back to where I was. Okay. St. Augustine describes slavery as being against God's intention and resulting from sin. In the 18th century, the, abol uh, the abolition movement took shape among Christian people across the globe. In the 18th and 19th century, centuries, uh, debates in the UK and the US Passages in the Bible were used by both pro-slavery advocates and abolitionists to support their respective views, which that basically just saying that everybody took whatever pieces out of the Bible they want. And uh, people that were pro-slavery said, well, look, God said it. And people that were abolitionists who were trying to get rid of slavery, well, look, nah, basically. And they're going to use the same book to do this, as opposed to looking at this book and being like, well, slavery just fucked up. Clearly, God didn't. He wouldn't say this. It's just fucked up. You don't treat people like that. And you got people out here, black people, knowing how they got slavery. I'm going to play this for y'all again. Maybe y'all forgot what she said. Let me go back and show y'all this one more time. Listen to this shit. I thank God for slavery. Mm. I thank God for the crack house. Mm, mm, if it mm. wasn't for the crack house, come on, somebody. Come on, God somebody. wouldn't have never been able to use me how he can use me now. And if it wasn't God for slavery, I might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. A tree. Had it not been for the European forcing this religion on you, uh, beating it into you had it not been for that experience God allowing that as he writes down rules in his book where it said that soon as somebody would to try to uh, kill a black person kill any person that would be called a slave they're supposed to die eye for an eye that's what's supposed to happen if God is real why would that not be enforced? Not now again, understand when I'm talking about the God, I'm talking about God that you people have come to understand as God. That you actually read from this book to create a God to you. You read from this shit. As opposed to saying, why would a God, a God that I'm going to believe in, why would he say something like this? Why would he have rules for slavery? What type of God is that? Should nobody be no slave? Should have ever been slavery? Like what the fuck? People don't do that. They don't want people to do to an entire group of people, beating them, mating them, owning their children. That's not what people do. God don't write down rules for that. God didn't write this book. Y'all can go wherever you want with it. I know people like to go and say it was Hebrew. I, I don't care who wrote it. 
the guy they had, the nigga they was talking to, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see the connection. I don't see the connection. <sighs> That's all the fuck I want to say, y'all. I figured we'd walk it down together because it's in a book that people really believe in and it's, it doesn't make any fucking sense that it's even in the goddamn book. But we don't look at it like that. Too many people are thanking God for slavery. Acting like that was a blessing of some sort. For it to be forced upon you. How is that a blessing? And although you've worked it out in your mind that that's not who God is. If you're reading who God is from that book, if you're getting your ideas of what God is from that book, you do not get to leave out this shit right here. You don't get to leave it out because there's a New Testament that was the old God. Why the fuck would a God ever okay slavery? Who gonna write that in a book? That sounds like some shit a man would write. Because now you got people over people. And we're not even talking about on the food chain. We're not even talking about what would be called natural order. We got people over people per what I call you. If you're born on a plantation, you're born a slave. You don't even get a chance. What type of God would allow that to happen? To where there's a fucking hierarchy like that. And you got the slave master who seems to be so divine. To where he can take a slave to God. So y'all telling me that God changed. But at one point in time he was sitting in a room waiting on slave masters to come bring him black uh, slaves that wanted to stay. Because they mated them with uh, uh, other slaves and had a family with them. They chose to stay. You telling me God was waiting somewhere in a room while this slave master uh, shanked down uh, or stuck a shank in a black person's ear? Like, <laughs> the fact that that was ever God should bother somebody. How are you getting your ideas for what God is from this book? Because if y'all saying God is real and he active and he moving then I would think he would be, or would have at some point enforced the rules that this book says that he enforces. But that didn't happen. Why aren't we thinking about that? It's not happening right now. They know eye for an eye. It's like, if God alive and he moving, where is that? Why it ain't happening? Who's enforcing these rules? What the European was able to do with this religion was to make himself the God and the slave master, the enforcer <laughs> and the slave master. Like, I don't understand why y'all don't see that. And I don't care if you tell me this was an old Hebrew, this ain't the original, this the one y'all reading from. This the one right here y'all reading from. Shouldn't be no slaves in it. That's all I'm saying. But I know this video was long, y'all. I know it was. But I wanted to, I really wanted us to learn and, and read this shit together. Because again, if you were raised in black churches like me, the pastor's not really dealing with 
well, who is this guy? He'll go to the Old Testament to grab him some stuff. I've even heard pastors justify slavery. I've heard of that. Black ones. That will thank God for. So I'm like, now this lady done said this shit is coming back out. This, this, the conversation is coming back up. And I wanted to go in here and we're going to talk. We talked about the whole thing. I'm not telling you not to believe in the Bible. If that's what you need. But you can't say that God is out here moving and working and doing stuff. If he's not enforcing his laws that, that he wrote down, according to y'all. Like, I don't see how y'all are okay with that. But, and, uh, y'all stop doing, don't, stop saying this type of coon shit. Like, for real, as a team, we don't really have time for this. We don't, we don't have time for coon shit like that. Kimberly Daniels is a coon, and she's in a position of power. Mad love, y'all. Subscribe. Follow me on social media. Share the video if you feel the need to share the video, y'all. I'm just trying to get us to thinking logically about this shit. That's all I'm out here trying to do. You can love it or hate it, but I'm going to do it. Mad love to you. Shout out Team Rob. Y'all already know what it is. I'm out.